Napa know how. Napa guy knows not to judge a man by his car's multicolor paint job or absence of modern gadgetry. Who cares if it's technically old enough to vote and the windows are powered by the strength of your left arm? Your monthly payment is zero, and it'll stay that way. Because with over 500,000 parts and a little Napa know-how, you can keep anything on the road. She may not be pretty, but she's all yours. That's Napa know-how. Napa know-how. Blog Talk Radio. Broadcasting Network, and I am your host, your old pal Weezy and the Mandated Reporter, and frankly, I'm mortified, Mr. Mark Radlich. And joining me tonight on this here Metal Hammer of Doom, as we bring our contribution to Wolverine Week, our review of 1993's Entombed Wolverine Blues, baby. My uh, third chair currently in the second chair, because I think Coop has projectile leprosy tonight. Ladies hey. and gentlemen, he's referred, he's referred to himself as Sartorine Blues. Mr. <laughs> Jesse Sarcher, how do you do, sir? <laughs> ah, wake up and smell the 90s. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so we, we were talking about, I was like, man, I, know, I don't ever recall uh, seeing anything about this album. And then it hit me. I had to have, because I'm sure that this got published in Marvel Comics. I mean, it's right. called Wolverine Blues, and we've seen, we've seen, you know, we've we've seen obviously the correlation between Wolverine and this and this album here. And sure enough, I tagged you in it. I don't know if you've seen it yet or not, but I have found a house ad for Wolverine Blues from one of the comic books. And I posted it on Facebook. That'll be happening all night tonight, folks, by the way. Each song we go through, I'll be posting something on Facebook just about it. And I'll be telling you. So we're going to have Wolverine Fact Night. That's what's going to happen. I want to <laughs> bestow upon you uh, how some Wolverine knowledge. And, of course, we'll talk a little bit about that as we go on here. But Mark okay. Radlitz, I'm proud right. to be here. Glad to be here. I hope Coop can make it. If, if he can't, he's missing out on a good one tonight. He really is. I was uh, I was hoping he would uh, pull it together, but you know, I, this is not a the Red Legend Broadcasting Network is serious stuff. Um, and, uh, but I don't pay anybody. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> and and judging by by the folks that I do work with that uh, do get paid, even when you pay people, sometimes they don't show up for work. I mean, shit happens. But um, I am looking at your advert. Wake up and smell the '90s. God, if I had only known, that would have been all over the advertisement <laughs> for this show this week. <laughs> oh, no <laughs> doubt, man. If I had only man. known. <laughs> uh, just, just a reminder, Wolverine Week started on Monday. Uh, it started actually in earnest on Friday with our announcement of Wolverine Week and our subsequent panel discussion of Wolverine, the life and time. This is your life, Logan, uh, is what we should have called it. 
And we, we looked at Wolverine in the comics and the cartoons and the movies and the pawns. Any way you wanted to go with it, we went. Um, and then on Monday, we had a, a source material where we looked at Old Man Logan, the loose inspiration for the movie Logan, which was reviewed on Tuesday uh, by myself and Robert Winfrey. Um, so let's, let's take a brief uh, time out from talking about all things Wolverine. And let's just look at the 90s. Because this album came out in 1993, and yeah. before the show started, you and I were talking about like what was going on that year. You know, depending on where you were and what you were doing, would you have known about it outside of an advert in a Marvel comic or something? 1993 was a hell of a year for heavy metal. That was the year that gave us, and I'm just looking at a list here on Google, uh, Sepultura's Chaos AD. Uh, some might say the height, the peak, the zenith of the... Uh, Cavalera Brothers Sepultura years. Then you have the debut of John Bush in Anthrax, The Sound of White Noise. Sound of White Noise, yeah. Tools Undertow. Typo oh, Negative. Bl- typo Negative, Bloody Kisses. Some might say that was the zenith of Typo Negative right there um, on their second album. Uh, Metallica, and this, this is a joke that goes back to one of my, uh, my, my wife's friends. Um, which I'm not going to get into. Needless to say, now I can't think about the Metallica box set without thinking about my friend Sarah. Uh, but live shit, Binge and Purge, the box set, Did You Buy the Box Set, came out in 1993. Um, fight, the, uh, the Judas Priest post, the uh, Rob Halford post-Judas Priest band, Fight put out War of Words. Uh, and if you don't know about Fight, you should. It's, it's amazing. Um over uh, Motorhead put out Bastards. There was uh, the Houdini by the Melvins. So there's a lot of stuff going on in 1990. The, the spaghetti incident from Guns N' Roses. Oh, oh, oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, wah, wah. Wah, there's a couple wah. good songs on that. There was a couple good songs off of that one, wasn't there? I can remember sure. a few. Okay, we won't we won't go into that. We've got we've got better things to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> um, Covenant by Morbid Angel came out that year Oh, I almost forgot the most important one Good thing I pulled up this list here from RateYourMusic.com The River Runs Red by Life of Agony Oh, one of my favorite wow albums of all times. Yeah That's a good so one Jesus That is could, a good one So you could be, for, you could be forgiven for uh, not knowing about Entombed With all this other goodness coming out uh, individual Thought Patterns by Death, Super Judge from Monster Magnet. Um, we had the Ethereal Mirror from Cathedral. There's a lot of stuff going on in 1993. So it, it is easy to believe that Entomb might have gotten past you. But if you, if you did miss it, you missed a good one. Uh, mm-hmm. Wolverine Blues released October 4th, 1993 was the third studio album from Swedish heavy metal band Intunda off of Earache Records. And this was a departure from what they had been doing in the past as they, as the album is is an amalgamation of hard rock, traditional heavy metal, and hardcore, which um, still retaining the death metal growl to the point where people started calling it death and roll which I think is hilarious, and I will be repeating ad nauseum. <laughs> I've never no heard reason. of it. Never heard of it until I read the way. <laughs> Neither have I. And then, <laughs> and then all of a sudden I'm like, Where? that's another thing that must have passed me by in the 90s, death and roll. Yep. I need more death and roll on this show. I need more death and roll in my life. Now, the hilarious thing about Entombed Wolverine Blues is – and. It, 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 it is only fitting that we would include it in a week where we were discussing Wolverine the character. Is the band wanted nothing to do with the character? Yeah. <laughs> they did not want their album associated with the, with the superhero. And Earrig Records was like, no, fuck that noise. Taking a page right out of the Rattledge playbook. They were like, nope, we're, we're, re- we're re releasing this heavily, heavily edited with Pro and Wolverine right on the cover. I, I yeah. think they don't even don't even know if Wolverine Blues, the song, is about the character or not. But I know that all of us metalheads 
who also read comic books in the 90s, made the assumption and the association. And whether the band intended it or not, that song is now forever linked with the character. Yeah, I mean, it's... uh, We we were talking about the house ad at the beginning of things. And, dude, you could probably go back into a lot of the comics in the 90s and just pull a random house ad. And I'll be like, yep, I remember seeing that one in uh, every comic I read. Uh, So it wouldn't surprise me for a band to say, well, I shouldn't say a band, but a label who wants to get the, hey, you want to make more money. You want to make more sales. One of the hottest characters at the time uh, of the 1990s was Wolverine. I mean, this isn't called Spider-Man blues, even though that was probably (laughs) a very popular character. This, you don't think heavy metal when you think Peter Parker. Okay. When you look at, you know, (laughs) <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. When, when you think of Peter Parker, you think of his relationship with Mary Jane Watson, and you think her hair is everywhere, screaming <laughs> infidelities. Ah, uh, sadness. So um, <laughs> that's an actual song, by the way. Yeah, that doesn't <laughs> surprise me. Uh, but yeah, you, you when you when you think Wolverine, I mean Wolverine and heavy metal. That's seems like a nice pairing in my opinion yeah so you hey listen if you're going to if you're going to put your uh if you're going to put your album out there associated with any uh, any character in the marvel universe wolverine would be the one to hitch it to in the 1990s so i think my personal opinion i haven't looked too deep into how you know how uh how they did how entomb didn't want you know, it, it, maybe they were okay with it after a little while, but my goodness, I think it was a good idea. I, I can't blame Eric for going. Yeah, we'll we'll hitch our uh, we'll hitch our wagon to that horse right there, and we'll ride it and see what we get. <laughs> and man, Marvel Marvel has no problem putting out house ads in their books. Uh, so when I pulled that house ad up, I was like, oh yes, I remember seeing that in comics. They would they would plaster that thing to get to you know get some sales. So now I'm, I'm curious as to what, you know, Marvel got out of the deal. Uh, it, it's, it's almost like, okay, well, hey, I imagine it's got to be a percentage of the sales of this CD because when they repackaged this thing, they put in a mini comic along with the CD, uh, which, oh, at 93, that's the early ground for CDs at that point in time. All right. um, but well, anyway. Think of, it, think of it this way. Venn diagram this out. Not all comic book fans are heavy metal fans. And not all heavy metal fans are comic book fans. And somebody who may have been inclined to pick up an Entombed album might not not know who the fuck Wolverine is or why any dork would read a comic book in the first place. But if it comes with a comic book, and the comic book is uh, an interesting read, they might venture into a comic book store and pick up another Wolverine comic. And, And especially like in the 90s, Given the association of heavy metal music with brutality and graphic artwork, I mean, just yeah. look at any number of Cannibal Corpse album covers. There's definitely a connection between, like, gore hounds, horror, and heavy metal enthusiasts. Not me, mind you. Um, but they're out there. I mean, let, just going back, look at Eddie, you know, the Iron Maiden uh Symbol, um, you know, or any of the old Megadeth albums. Ah, uh-huh. Vic the mascot, yeah. Right, Vic the mascot, it's... exactly. We're talking, you know, we're, we're talking gruesome images here. So it's entirely possible that if you have a character who's basically one, you know, a few shades shy of the murder beast xenomorphs from Aliens, and the amount of <laughs> carnage he creates, especially in that time. And a oh, lot yeah. of his books are edging towards the side of, you know, very adult-oriented. I mean, Wolver- a lot of the Wolverine books were not really meant for young kids. They, they were absolutely meant for an adult audience. So, again, if you're, at, if you're associating the character with the band and the band with the character, you might pick up some new fans that, from, from the heavy metal uh, group that previously never read comic books. Just as an aside, 
I, w- I wish this was a thing that caught on where there was like a Batman blues, you know, or, uh, <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> I would have loved that. And, and, and it reminds me of a justice league unlimited episode. I don't know if you've ever, did you ever watch justice league unlimited? Uh, very, you know, I, I think I may have caught a couple episodes, but I'm not, I'm not, uh, you know, well-versed. Okay. So early on in season one, which if I can find the YouTube video, this I'll post it on Facebook for you to, to, to take a look at at some point during the show. Um, at the end of, excuse me, an episode with Zatanna and Batman, um, Batman basically gets his arm twisted into singing a song on stage. And he sings it as Batman. And it's great. He sings Am I Blue. You know, Am I Blue. You know that song? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> okay. He sings Am I Blue, and it is heart-wrenching. And they actually show... Zatanna and whoever the female villain is that episode, just in tears. And there's just there's a heart being ripped out of the chest because I think a I, soulful version of it. Yes, I think I have seen that episode. Very early in the season, if I remember correctly. I, I remember yeah, actually watching like with, that one. Yeah, it's within like two or three episodes. Batman yeah. sings and my blues. Yeah, Batman sings the blues. <laughs> well, let me tell you friend of the show, Benjamin J. Cologne, was, no, it was either Benjamin or maybe it was Coop, uh, clued me in on something called The Dark, the Dark Saga by Iced Earth. And we're, mm-hmm. We've reviewed Iced Earth on here. Have you ever heard of The Dark Saga? Sure. The Dark, the dark Saga was um, their album strictly dedicated to the comic book character Spawn and his history. And when Coop mentioned that, and then, of course, Benjamin J. Cologne, he's like, you got to check the album out. I listened to it, and it – so that's about the only other thing – only other album that I could really think of that kind of falls in that vein where it's – it is strictly – I mean, Spawn is on the cover of the Iced Earth album. So uh, if anybody gets the opportunity to listen to that as a fan of Spawn, trust me, you'll dig the album because it's – there's – it's nothing but – it's chock full of, like – Al Simmons' origin story and all sorts of great stuff. You are now tagged. <laughs> tagged. I've tagged. been tagged. Oh, <laughs> there it is. You're you're tagged. All right, let's let's get on with this. So as I see it, as I said, uh, this here is the Wolverine Blues, and we're gonna play the whole album tonight. This really is a great album, I, and I would hate to sort of limit this to just talking about Wolverine. Um, the whole thing is really, really good, and it starts off a little, you know, like, oh, where are they getting this death and roll stuff from? But as as the album progresses, you can see why it was named uh, in the top 500 of the uh, greatest rock and metal albums of all time from uh, Rock Hard Magazine. There's actually 494 on that list, and uh, 1994's Best Death Metal Efforts. Uh, from Guitar World. So, you know, high praise indeed for Entomb's Wolverine Blues. So let's get into this now. This here is track one. This is I Master.
am reminded of a lot of music from the 90s in metal, um, from the vocals. And, and, I, and I have to say, they may have started out more of a, of a death metal band, but I, I find this sound to be much more interesting. And I, and I have to say, going back and listening to this brings up a lot of memories of that time. I was actually, in 1993, um, I was finishing my junior year, starting my senior year of high school. So a lot of, a lot of memory infused in the music of that time. I can feel you there. Uh, one of the things that came to mind <clears throat> was uh, Pitchfork from Clutch. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the the real heavy stuff, and that was I think that was ninety ninety four ninety five for those guys. Um, but I wasn't too into the whole death metal scene or even foreign music at that point. I mean, if it was from overseas, for some strange reason, I like stuck my nose up as shit that came from overseas. And not that I even had this album, the opportunity to do that to this album in any way. So when we first talked about listening to this album, I was like, oh man, I'm not, I'm not going to dig this. This is nineties. It's going to be, it's going to sound like, I'm just not going to be impressed. And I'll tell you right, right off the bat here, first track, I'm like, okay, I can dig this. This is, you know, this is kind of, this is some good stuff. I'm, I'm actually kind of enjoying it. Um, uh, real quick, uh, let's go ahead. Like I said, <laughs> I am going to – they don't want to be associated with the character Wolverine, and I've decided tonight to just go ahead and make every song off of this album related to Wolverine history in some way and drop some Wolverine knowledge. Uh, I was so, going to say, Jesse's introducing a new character today called Tough Shit Jesse. Uh, where you, whether you like tonight, it or tonight not, only. Oh, shit, it's happening. Here it comes. Here it comes. I master. So the first thing I thought of was Wolverine's alternate identity, Patch. Yeah, I master. Get it? Huh? Yeah. yeah. That's what I uh, first appearance. Marvel Comics presents number ten, January nineteen eighty nine. His alternate, alternative, his alias, basically. He, whenever he wanted to get away from his X Men buddies, he'd ever he'd head over to Madripoor, uh, which I think is Southeast Asia, and hang out there as uh, a guy by the name of Patch. Like, like you couldn't tell this motherfucker was Wolverine or not. I mean, he's got the hair. All he has is a patch <laughs> over his eye. <laughs> anyway, I'm I'm tagging him on Facebook as we go. So there is a picture of Patch, and I made sure to get you in there. And it, it just distinctly says, I'm Patch. But, yes, there's I Master. There you go, Entombed. Deal with that, because we got another nine songs to go. And trust me, I'm bringing more Wolverine <laughs> history right to you. No, that's fantastic. All right. Moving right along, put loose and fancy freak. This is track two. This is I'm 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 aiming to not do a two and a half hour show tonight. In case anyone's wondering, <laughs> we got a, you got a shit story to tell. <laughs> nope. <laughs> this is rotten soil. Think a rotten soil. That's a good one. I think we're keeping up the pace. 
I enjoyed it. I thought it was I thought it was pretty decent uh, for the second song on the album. I, mean, I don't know what if any you know thought went into how they constructed this thing or if they just threw some songs together. Uh, I can tell you one thing about Entombed. I mean, these guys have been around for uh, at this time. I think only like two or three albums came before this. Is that right? Uh, this is album number three. Album number three, okay, and but they're still around today. weren't you guys just talking about how they had? Uh, didn't they like change the lineup or somebody got kicked out? Yeah, they've had uh, like every band that we cover on here. They've had a number of different uh, band lineups. I think I remember lineup. there's recently at, at least some some bit of news about how. One of them got yeah. kicked out or something like that, but because yeah, it was like entombed out. AD or something like that, I, I, if I remember yeah. right, they like changed the freaking name of the band. But anyway, uh, hey, I, I'm still liking the album. I'm I, I'm still liking it. So rotten soil. Um, oh, uh, let's uh, let's do Wolverine. Wolverine fact number two here. Uh, the only thing I could think of, all right, to even come close to trying to attempt to relate it to <laughs> Wolverine was the character man thing. Uh, I don't know if you've ever heard of the character man thing, but he's like, he, 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 okay. Swamp thing. You think swamp thing, uh, except he's like way more disfigured and he looks like a damn elephant almost. I was gonna say, he's, um, like, he's like the elephant man. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's scary looking. So I was like, well, wait, there has to have been at some point, these two Marvel characters have met up. And the only thing I could find was Marvel Comics Presents number eight that has the cover, and I'm about to share it on Facebook here, of Wolverine, and in the background lurks a large, looming man thing. And here's the thing. <laughs> here's the thing. Uh, Marvel Comics Presents was actually, if you pick those up off the rack, you got two stories in them. So even though two characters would be featured on the cover it's not like they had a story where they interconnected it was like one wolverine story and then one man thing story so even though the cover looked cool as hell and you're thinking oh man wolverine's in for it now no nope, afraid not two separate stories <laughs> they tricked you too bad so sad but yes that's uh, that's uh that's the only thing i could come up with rotten soil yeah marvel marvel is friends for bait and switch oh boy are they ever <laughs> all right all right man we've uh the whole reason we're talking about this album is the next track and it's a short one you know only gonna get to play about a minute of it before we got to cut it off and and i have to say and we're gonna go over the lyrics of it uh after i play the song but i don't know what they were going for with this track at once again i don't know if it's specifically about the character or they had something else in mind, and they they just couldn't get away from it, and they were like, well, I guess we'll embrace it because we like money. But either way, it's Wolverine Blues, and whether they like it or not, it will always be associated with that character. to it. See, there's where you get the death and roll. Um, mm-hmm. 
But, but let's talk about this for a minute. What you believe is the vanity you conceive. What you love you don't pen. To put in a cage is to put it to an end. Enamored of the passion, life-sucking lust, you will never gain my trust. It's a misanthropical breed, insatiable in my need to feed. Sorry, I'm a misanthropical breed. Utterly fearless for your luscious flesh. I've got an appetite like a war, and I'm always hungry for more. Vicious mammal, the blood is my call. Pound for pound, I am the most vicious of all. <laughs> now that, that, now that sounds that is an, almost a direct quote. I swear from Wolverine, dude. <laughs> I was gonna say, fellas, if you weren't trying, you fucked up. I, I, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Um, and yes, to answer your previous question, now that I'm not looking for pictures of X Men Origins Wolverine, the Entombed was active from '87 to '14. There was a two-year hiatus. And from 2016 on, they've been active. There's been 167 different people in this band, it looks like. <laughs> and um looks like their last studio album was actually in 2007. Um, is what it says here. Serpent Saints, the Ten, Amend- the Ten Amendments, June 25th, 2007. Uh, they've got some EPs. There's some split albums. Last one being with Evile in 2013. Um, some live stuff. Uh, and that's about it. There's not a whole lot else here. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I, and now, if they're called something else now, I have no idea what they're called. I, I missed that Where? part of the discussion. Entombed AD, I think, is what they were suggesting. Let me look and see what they had here. Yeah, it's Entombed AD, which I can't remember the dude's last or the dude's name, but they kicked the guy out, and supposedly his name it was like after, and whatever the D stood for was like the guy's name. And you felt sorry <laughs> for him because they were like, "Fuck you, man! We're going to call our band Entombed AD now uh, because awesome. you're out of it." Um, well, they yeah. have released two albums, one in 2014 called Back to the Front. You will do what I do when I say Back to the Front. <laughs> back to the Front. <laughs> um, and then in 2016, a little over a year ago, they released Dead Dawn. Dead Dawn, Dead Dawn, Dead Dawn. I'm a fucking girl. All right, that's not right at all. Uh. Um, <laughs> <boo>. <laughs> yes. They are, in fact, known as Entombed AD right now, and currently in the band, according to the Wikipedia page, Nico Elgstrand, Ali Dijizit, Lars Goran Petrov, and Victor Brandt. So there you go. That's what's going on with the old Entombed. All right, man. There you um, go. What did you think of uh, the old Wolverine Blues? Our title track. Go ahead, kick some ass, man. Uh, again, I was... I I love the heaviness of this album. Um, I know I told you that when I was listening to the Spotify, they had two versions. One of them had the full dynamic range, and then the other one was just the regular. Um, and I we were talking about what the difference was. It's definitely you know it's completely the same songs. It's just they're mixed a little bit differently. But I can tell you that this one. The the full dynamic range version sounds a lot cleaner, and I I, I started tonight as just comparing both songs, or both uh, both of Wolverine Blues off of each song, and it, like I said, the full dynamic range sounds a little bit cleaner. But if you listen to the regular one, the guitar even sounds just it seems to sound more crunchier for some reason. Mm-hmm. If that's a apt description of it, but I I dig that shit, man. I I really do. I think. Um, if I would have had the opportunity to listen to like clutch, the heavy stuff back in the day when it first released off of pitchfork and and, and whatnot, um, I don't know if that would have completely enraptured me like clutch did when I first heard clutch clutch. But, uh, the point is, is that now I see myself enjoying that heavier, harder stuff. Uh, and, and something like this, I don't know if I would have paid it two minds back Back in the nineties. Why do you? But let me hey. ask you a question. Why do you think that is? Because I've actually gotten like less intense over time, and I can appreciate, 
you know, this is actually like a source of conflict with, with a lot of the guys that I do podcasts with because they sort of maintain that sort of, I'm going to go with harder edge, um, but just, just more of a, an unwillingness to accept anything but what their vision of something should be. And like I've become just, and this, and this, and this goes to the music that I listen to too. Like, I remember as, as growing up, in, you know, in my, even in my 20s, music had to be a certain thing. It had to be a certain pitch. It had to be a certain intensity, uh, a certain level of, of violence. And I wouldn't accept anything less. As I've gotten older, I'm much more willing to accept a wider array of stimuli or a presentation of a thing. And I find that I'm surrounded by a lot of people who – they're very just stuck in their own way and stuck in their own thoughts and how they accept things. And you would think that like people would be more like me as you get older, you know, and you, you start to have a family and you start to have more responsibilities, <clears throat> that sort of thing gets less important to you. And so you're more willing to accept, maybe I'm wrong. Um, but I'm, I'm curious to see what you think about that. What do you, you mentioned families. I mean, how many of these people have families? Cause uh, and Good I'm not, point. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not going to be a douche, complete douche nozzle, but I, I, I could tell you when my daughter was born in 2005, I went through a country phase, man. I mean, I couldn't name you a lot of country songs that came out that year because I felt, I don't know, I felt more mellow. Um, right. When you have that, when you have that change in your life, and you realize that you have, you're responsible for something that you created. <laughs> uh, t- it, I don't know if it changes you on a, I think it changes you on a mental level in some way. And, mm-hmm. you know, I still, I still appreciate the heavy shit, man. I mean, usually when I go through my work day, uh, I've got to have something upbeat to keep me focused. So right. I'm listening to creator or I'm listening to uh, some of the other heavy stuff that we've, we've listened to in the past. And I, I, it's hard for me to go back. It's not like I got to flip on a country station right now and be like, Oh, here we go. Uh, I'm I'm back into it or anything like that. It's, it's. I honestly think it has something to do with your lifestyle and what you're going through and the type of change that you're going through, right? And at that time, I mean, if you're getting married and all of a sudden you're having kids, oh, well, you know, you're going to be listening to a lot more fucking shit that you never listened to before, like a bunch of pop stuff. <laughs> Dude, I, I can't even tell you. I know I've bitched about how my daughter gets a hold of the Spotify account. And now all of a sudden, you know, the, the mixes that they come up for me, uh, I'm like, okay, what the <laughs> hell has happened? <laughs> but I'll be in the car. She'll grab the phone and she'll be like, I want to listen to my stuff. And now all of a sudden I'm bobbing my head to some bullshit. I would have never thought that I would have enjoyed right. in the past. So I, it's, it's just a matter of, I think the people that bring that, bring that into your life and, and how you're living. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I would I would agree with that. Um, I, I do think that if you don't have those elements of your life that suddenly change your perspective of what's important in this world, um, you're going to maintain that something really, really stupid, in my opinion, um, is still important and it's non-negotiable. Oh uh, yeah, that's I just, I, no. There's no I, reason. I, I, don't, I, I don't have the patience to, to live like that. I hear you All right um, Let's get on with the next one And I'm I'm very curious to see what picture you associate with this This is track four This is Demon
When he just yells like that, that's, that's all I can think of is Devon Dudley going, what's up? Never know. It could have been an inspiration. <laughs> 1990s. Yeah, so before the what's up thing was ever, ever you know, well before the what's up <laughs> thing was ever popular. <laughs> sure. Uh, let me just say this. This track picks it up for me. I really like this one. Uh, I actually think that I like this one more than Wolverine Blues. It's it. it I dig this one a lot. Um, there the next you know these next few tracks seem to really speak to me when it comes to this album. Like some of the some of the better tracks off this album. So, uh, but yeah, Demon. I, I enjoyed it. What do you think? No, it's good. I mean, it, that 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 made me laugh. The, you know, just him screaming randomly. Other than that, it was fine. I, you know, I dig it. It's a good song. You know, there's, there's no, there's no problem there. All right. Um, All right. It just, it just made me laugh. <laughs> All right. Well, you, you ready for your Wolverine factoid? Here we go. That's, that's All right. Wolverine. Believe it or not, Wolverine was, in fact, his body was possessed by a demon at one point. Uh, oh, boy. It started, yeah, it started out in, it, this was in, what, what do we got here? Wolverine number one. Uh, not not the first Wolverine. This is 2000's Wolverine. November 2010 is the cover date. Uh, Wolverine goes to hell. <laughs> and in his place, a demon takes over Wolverine's body, and of course, all sorts of hijinks ensue. Uh, they state that this de- <laughs> this <laughs> this demon apparently appeared in 34 issues. Aliases, one of the aliases, probably my favorite alias uh, uh, of many of the Wolverine, is Helverine. Yes, sir, Helverine. God. Yeah. That was the name of a band, a bad one. <laughs> A bad one. <laughs> yeah. So there you go. There's your there's your association with the track. Wolverine was once possessed by a demon in 2010 forward. Yeah, I totally thought you were going to go with, like, Inferno. Ooh, that would have been a good one. I There was a couple what-if issues that I almost used, but decided against. Uh, I went for the straight possession angle here. All right. All right. Well, very good, sir. Very good. Let's move this along here. Uh, this next is track five. So one of our longer songs of the album, clocking in at four minutes and 30 seconds. We can hear a little bit more of it. This is Contempt.
a brief pause for the cause. I believe we are joined by our second chair, oh. Mr. Robert Cooper. How you feeling, bud? We're lucky I'm calling in. Huh. <laughs> yeah, I just Yeah, I just woke up. <laughs> wow, funny. That's all I've done today. Yeah, I think I got my stepdad's stomach virus, which is funny. It's it's great. Since I can't vomit, it just makes the makes it all more fun. Oof. I actually call that a work you, That's a rarity. Have you vomited? I can't. Wait, 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 One you can't. can't. This is it's like a physical I, impossibility? Indeed. It is? Mm-hmm. That's, that's something I've never heard of. Yeah, I've definitely heard yeah. of being constipated. I've never heard of being mouth constipated. Like, why can't you vomit? Because I was uh, uh, given a surgery when I was a baby. Because I had this thing called a floppy esophagus. She made it to where, like, everything I ate and drank would, like, come back up. So they uh, put, like, this little trap door somewhere down the line. Wow. So, like, have, it will go down, but it won't go up. That's crazy. You have a floppy. Wait, did you say you have a floppy esophagus? Mm-hmm. Will you please start a band with that name? <laughs> <laughs> Please start Robert, a band. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care what kind of music you guys play, but please call your band Floppy Esophagus. I'm, t- I'm trying to decide whether it's going to be like a hardcore band or just I'm just going to straight up do like a surf rock. <laughs> uh, I think you should call yourself Floppy Esophagus and just do nothing but breakdowns. Oh. Oh God. <laughs> and just the entire well, time it's. Like somebody's vomiting. Oh. <laughs> we can have samples of Vince McMahon from Beyond the Mat. Oh, He's no. He's going to puke. He's, He's going to puke. puke. <laughs> He's going to puke. Oh, God. What a maneuver. <laughs> <laughs> like, it is well, a very I'm good thing like... Vince McMahon stopped commentating. Yeah. Um,. Well, I'm glad you could make it onto the show, even if you're a little uh, under the weather there, Floppy. Um, you wanna... They're usually on the We're toilet, up... but... <laughs> <laughs> We're up to track six here of uh, Wolverine Blues. You want to do 50 words or less on your thoughts on uh, Entombed in general, this album? What do you, you know, whatever, whatever you want. I don't want to go back over things, but I, I do want to give you your opportunity to speak to the album up to this point. So, uh, I mean, Entomb in general are one of my favorite old school death metal bands, or at least for the first three albums. Uh, Left Hand Bath, Path, and Death Sign, and Wolverine Blues are all three really fucking good albums. Uh, this is the first album that they had that uh, I feel like they started to adopt the, I feel like, what is their signature sound, which is called Death and Roll, uh, yeah. where it mixes the stylistic. Uh, a lot of the stylistic flair of rock and roll with straight death metal. Yeah, we uh, talked about that earlier. Um, I've never actually never I've never heard the phrase death and roll before. Now I'm obsessed with it. Oh, I was obsessed with it. Now I'm obsessed with floppy esophagus. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think that should be like my first song. Like, well, floppy esophagus, and this is death and roll. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's good stuff. Oh, yeah, but uh, but yeah, their first two albums. Uh, what really, what I just really love is the, uh, it's just style that they would, that they would play is uh, in those first two albums, very indicative of the time where they've got the uh, guitars tuned where they sound like fucking chainsaws. Oh, it just makes my day. Like that, that speaks to my soul. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, uh, yeah, they were just. By far one of the uh, They're one of those bands that are When they're on, they're on And when they're not, they're just like kind of there uh, I've not listened to any of their new stuff As in Tomb AD Since uh, LG Petrov, the singer Decided to go make his own version of it And the other three guys were like yeah, We're going to keep the name Wasn't, we were trying <laughs> to figure out What AD stood for And, because I, I, I remember you guys Talking about this on a previous episode 
And I just cannot for the life of me think of what AD stood for, like after something. But uh, after, was it after death or was it something else? Uh, I just kind of assumed it was the same AD that they use for uh, use of the like, calendar. Like BC AD. Okay. I thought it had some kind of a meaning, like because they got rid of this douchebag, uh, they decided AD. <laughs> Anyway, well, maybe that's what it stands for. <laughs> after douchebag. After douchebag. <laughs> after douchebag. Yeah, it's really funny. LG Petrov. Uh, one of my favorite cameos in a song is uh, him. He's on Guardians of Asgard by uh, Amon Amar. It's just awesome. Nice. Yeah, but uh, yeah, they've got some other good albums. I think their their best. God damn it, cat. Their best one, uh, besides these three, is uh, Morning Star, which came out in 2001, which was very much a return to form for them. Because what they really started to do after this was kind of slowly go less death metal and more kind of into that uh, that rock and roll, the death and roll. That, that sound that Mark loves so much. But they start, started becoming less of a death metal band, and a lot of their, uh, they had some weird-ass song, uh, song choices. All right, Jesse. Now you go ahead and speak to your comic book cover there. By the way, ah. uh, in case you in case you didn't know, uh, Jesse is debuting a new character on this show tonight called "Fuck You, Jesse." Um, <laughs> <laughs> not and, not my choice of name, but hey, we'll go with it. <laughs> so "Fuck You, Jesse" uh, is aiming both barrels at Entombed, who we talked about not wanting to associate themselves or the song with the actual Wolverine character and well, that's that, all Jesse's well, doing that, tonight. Well it wasn't the I mean honestly I think Wolverine Blues very much describes the character Wolverine. But I can see we why agree. they do this because the version with that Marvel uh co produced with I think was it Eric Records? Uh yeah, yeah. was not authorized by the band. But, yeah, but right. yeah, they pretty much just cannibalized the album and slapped Wolverine on it and called <laughs> the night, which, I mean, hey, that's a pretty cool. I mean, yeah, they even cut all they cut all the swearing out. They cut a whole song out, but at least they gave a pretty cool album cover. True. Yeah. Very true. Well, uh, according to the <laughs> according to the Wikipedia page, um, they 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 did not want to associate themselves with. Wolverine, and they were sort of forced to by the uh, record company against their will. And so, in honor of the record company, we're, Jesse's doing it again. Um, I'm going to quickly <laughs> go ahead and explain your thing, Jesse. But I'm going to tag you guys in a picture that I just saw from the Deadpool Facebook page. Um, this is hilarious, and I need you both to see it. Well, all so right, all right. I'm going to go. Ahead. So you do your thing, but I want you guys to see the picture. All right, so yeah, Coop, what I'm doing here is I'm associate or I'm associating every song on this album with a piece of history from Wolverine. So we're gonna you know, there, this one right here, <laughs> Contempt. The name of the song that we just listened to was Contempt. So what I did was who who else does Wolverine have contempt for? None other than his. I, you know what, dude? I seriously, legitimately had Cyclops written down. But then I was like, wait a second. Sabretooth. Duh. I mean, come on, man. That's the, I was like, oh, yes, of course. So uh, there's been so many battles between Wolverine and Sabretooth across comics history. Uh, what I did was I, te- or I, uh, I posted their, one of their first battles, which was X-Men... 213, I want to say. Uh, yeah, X Men 213, which came out, I believe, in 80. What did we say here? I had it eight, nine, January 1st, 1987. Uh, so that was like one of their first full fledged battles that they had. And across, like I said, from there on out, every once in a while, Sabretooth would show up and him and Wolverine would go at it. These guys were just, uh, I mean, it was, it, it was off the chain at the, some of the fights. One of my best. And one of my favorite fights between these two was right before Age of Apocalypse, where Wolverine had his claws underneath Sabretooth's neck. And he had, the, he had two of his claws uh, basically coming up across the cheeks, and the third one was going to go right up through, uh, right up underneath his neck into his skull. Uh, and right before that happens, Age of Apocalypse hit, and everything turns to white. 
So we don't know if Wolverine actually killed Sabretooth or not at the end of that issue. So anyway, Mark Radlich, what'd you tag us in? Well, refresh your Facebook page and you'll see. Okay. No, oh, yes. I don't know. <laughs> Isn't that great? <laughs> Let me see if I can get my computer turned on. Oh. Keep moving okay, is not do that. Best. You do that. I'm going to go ahead and play Full of Hell, and we'll, we'll come back to this masterpiece picture. This is my favorite song, Easy, off this album. I don't know why, but I love this song. Yeah, that, mm. that's pretty incredible. Um, that 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 pretty much reminded me of, like I said, old school clutch, at least in the um, non-vocal department. And the guitar is, definitely has that stoner rock, dirty blues feel to it. Just an awesome, awesome song. All right, Coop, did you find a picture? Uh, it's still loading. Uh, I, what I really like about this song and a lot of what this album does really well, wake up and smell the 90s. <laughs> 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 was that really from the Deadpool page? No, that that was mine. I think you're looking for – you need to – that one was uh, w- one of the house ads from for Entomb's Wolverine Blues. And you know, now what? I'll give you I a can hand. totally see why they wouldn't want. Oh no! God, <laughs> Turtle Wolverine was so stupid looking. <laughs> I don't think he's made it there yet, Mark. No, take a ride on no, the yeah, seat wagon. Take a ride Ooh, on the seat no, wagon. Oh, that's <clears> the one he tagged in. Okay. Oh, here's one Mark tagged me in. Hold on. <laughs> That's perfect. It, 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 it is the beast. It is. There's no denying that. Oh, Deadpool Booty and the Beast. It is a mock-up of the Beauty and the Beast book picture, and it says Booty and the Beast, and the booty is Deadpool in her red dress. And oh, my gosh. Beast is, beast is the X-Men's Beast. This is a pretty hilarious picture. All right, so, <laughs> you, so full of hell, Scoop, go. Uh, this song, as well as this album, does a really good job of uh, having riffs that are nice and, is that a better word to really describe it, beefy. Beefy. Like, they're just <laughs> beefy, like big, muscular riffs that are just, like, there for you to punch people in the face. Beefy, and not in the way they're, like, five fingers. Yeah, it's, it's not in the way five finger <laughs> death punches either, where it's just, like, beefy and fake and artificial and it's really going to cause some dude that's really on the juice to try and steal your girlfriend. Could happen. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, you got to watch yeah, out for that. I, I, that's right. Because uh, <laughs> ain't nobody got time for that. That's right. Catch me. I almost said catch me outside. How about no, that? no, don't do that. No, not here. I, okay, but, can, can someone explain that to me? I have no idea what. Oh, all I know is that I've seen this like <clears throat> meme of like the catch me outside girl has a zillion Instagram followers. <laughs> I guess that's important. <laughs> but like, I don't know. Some kid, <laughs> some kid did his homework and has no followers. I don't really get it. So, uh, so, okay, so what is so going what, on with this broad? So with 
this dumb 13-year-old, and she is dumb, and she is 13, and she has one of those really fake black scents. You know what I'm talking about, where uh, she's yeah. like a white girl who really wants to sound black. It's really fucking insulting. Uh, but, yeah, so what what it is is she was on Dr. Phil as a unruly child, and Dr. Phil was going to fix her. And uh, she's sitting there just kind of insulting the crowd. She's like, oh, all these hoes want to... Want to go with me? How about that? How about that? Catch me outside. And Dr. Phil's like, What? He's like, You know, catch me outside. What does that mean? Oh, you know, catch me outside. All these hoes want to be talking shit. They catch me outside. How about that? So, so she's pretty much, we're glorifying stupidity, is what it really is. Oh. I mean, it's catchy and it's, it's funny. Ridiculous. But this girl's going to get a reality show, and she has 7 million Instagram followers. I'm pretty sure she didn't finish 7th grade, and her mother allows it. So it's great. But the thing that's even better is this is bad. This is bad that we're even cheering about this. But when people keep catching her outside and beating the <coughs> shit out of her. Did I just see a video of a, a woman pulling her that girl by the hair out of a car and just beating the fuck out of her? And they're like, look, the cat caught her outside. <laughs> And it, it's one that's a chuckle, but at the same time, I'm like, that's still a child. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was going to say, like, are we now laughing at a child being beaten up? What? Because that's yes. horrible. Uh, that's horrible. I, I get We are. Well, I you know, it, it, how many times have you seen some kid act like that, and you hear somebody goes, somebody needs to beat that kid's ass? Well, guess well, what? Somebody does, okay. need, somebody does Some, need to beat her ass, and that's the thing. Like, she needs a straight-up, like, fucking, like, a hammer on her, quite literally. <laughs> but she is still kind of a child. So it's yeah. one of those, I'm like, yeah. she needs How to get, get whipped out of her because her mother won't do it, obviously. But uh, okay, unfortunately, but, like, she sounds like one of those punk kids that's going to be like, and, oh, and, people beat my ass, but I'm still here. Catch me outside. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, if another 13-year-old, like, beats her ass, whatever. But I don't think she should be beaten up by an adult. That's called child abuse. <laughs> That's assault. Yeah. And that, that you go to jail for. I, what the fuck are we doing here? Um, so really, like, she's, she's internet famous for being on Dr. Phil and basically saying, I'll fight the audience outside. And people are like, yeah, let's go fuck up a 13-year-old. Well, yeah. And the way that she said it in her big Bostonian ass, accent, 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 Bostonian, Bostonian, I don't know. You, you I don't mean, get to make fun of her. You don't get to make fun of her when you pronounce the word accent. Accent. <laughs> She's not ascending. It's an accent, uh, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get both barrels of fuck you, Jesse. I can see it now. Be ready. <laughs> All right, hold on. I, okay, Wolverine factoid real quick. Full of hell reminded me specifically of Feral Wolverine, where all it was shortly after he had a very, very tragic accident. Uh-oh, what happened to Coop? Coop must have dropped. Um, I stole but, it uh, All right, well, he's messaging us, so he can't hear us. But anyway, Wolverine uh, okay. Wolverine had a had a very a very traumatic uh incident to where all of a sudden he started to regress and we find out that part of his mutation is actually turning him into a feral uh a feral human or a feral human being pretty much, a feral creature. Mm-hmm. Uh so he went through a big phase where he lost his nose and wore a bandana over his eyes and uh, was just kind of like letting hair grow all over and not taking showers and stuff. Feral Wolverine, <laughs> full of hell. Almost Wolverine, I love it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> this next one, track seven, it's called Blood Song.
All right, I love your cover for this one. This one's absolutely perfect. Go. Absolutely. What if Volume 2, number 24, came out in, I think, the late 80s, uh, where it was, what if Wolverine was Lord of the Vampires? And actually, on my... you You covered this on Source Material, right? Exactly, on my show. I was just getting ready to plug it. We covered this on Source Material. Me and Ronnie talked about this. Wolverine became Wolverine killed Dracula, okay? He kills Dracula in this story and becomes Lord of the Vampires. The only person that can stop Wolverine is the Punisher. But of course, I mean the Punisher's not going to be just ready ready to go up against a a, a vampire Wolverine. He's got to enlist some help. And he does so by going over and checking out Doctor Strange's Sanctum Santorum. However, Doctor Strange has been dead for a while but not his astral form, huh? to which they then find something called the Montes- uh, uh, Montessori. Oh, man, I forget what it's called now. Montessori. Mon- Montessori. They find the Montessori formula and are able to uh, combat. Imagine Punisher wearing the freaking le- the cloak of levitation and the eye of Agamotto. All right. And it goes up, it, there's a battle that ensues. It's, it's a great, great book. But anyway, that's the first thing I thought of was Wolverine, Lord of the Vampires. Suck it, Entombed. Another one nailed down. <laughs> um, song's okay. I really don't yeah, know it's all right. to say about it. Yeah, it's, just, it's nice. It's too big. All yeah, right. Um, <laughs> all right, here we go. This is track eight as we are winding this puppy down. This is Hollow Man. choose from all right it, this is the this is in the middle of the fatal attraction storyline that occurred in the early 90s and uh, maybe it was mid 90s but what had happened is the one i wanted to pick just didn't show the the graphic uh, uh the graphicality of what was going on here the brutality if you will of what was going on magneto ripped the admantium from wolverine's bones in this storyline, they have this battle with Magneto, and Magneto loses his shit. And it's like, you know what? It's time. I'm going to show you guys how powerful I am. And like, lays Wolverine out, and then proceeds to take the Admanium from his bones through his skin. So, what you're seeing here is the Admanium being poured, well, I said poured, pulled off of his bones. And this is, of course, the incident that I had referred to earlier that. Re- that had made Wolverine a feral creature. This is it. He slowly descends into an animalistic nature after losing his admantium because his healing factor, we all know Wolverine's got this healing factor. The reason he's picked to put the admantium on his bones is because he has this extensive healing factor and he can live through that operation. But when that's gone, 
his healing factor starts like, uh, and his mutation starts uh, doing some crazy whacked out shit. And the other thing, of course, the next step is he starts turning into this this animal. But hey, the claws stay, folks. Yes, the claws weren't added on in that experiment of Weapon X. No, as a matter of fact, those claws are bone. And we find that out at the end of the story, which is which is great. But yes, Fatal Attractions, another one entombed, Hollow Man. All right. Well done. Uh, the, the song itself is, again, okay. Um, again, I like the crunchier, uh, as Robert put it, the beefier guitar licks in this. Um, this one's uh, falling a little bit more on the side of traditional heavy metal. It's fine. I don't dislike it. It's just nothing special. Let's move on to track nine, second to last here. This is Heaven's Die. Yep. It's got a good guitar look to it. Um, got a good, good, nice pace to it. Um, go ahead. I agree. Uh, this is we're coming into the closing. What we're like? This is well. If you were listening to the Marvel cut of this, uh, this song or this, excuse me, this album, this would be the final song on that tra- on that uh, on that album. But uh, yeah, as we're coming to a close, they're they're picking it up. They're still staying strong. It's something that I definitely listen to. So I give it a thumbs up for sure. Um, Cooper, are you ready for? You're back. Hey, Coop. Oh, hang on. You're back, Cooper. I am. <laughs> fucking right. AT and T, I swear. Fuck. Fucking AT and T. Yeah. Oh God, these guys are such ash fucks. Anyway. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, I forget what track we're on. We're on track number nine. I know that much. Fucking awesome song. Uh, there's really not a whole lot of weak songs on here. Uh, like one song I remember while listening to kind of making a mental note was I think track number six was it uh, very much reminded me of Seasons in the Abyss by Slayer I think just in terms of atmosphere at the beginning mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. but yeah this one uh, just another really solid track uh, yeah I'd say I'd say one thing this album has going for it is that, that it's uh, very consistent but it's not samey no, it's definitely not Samesy. All right, Jesse, why is Wolverine dead? What's going on here? <laughs> In Apocalypse the Twelve, that was the story arc that came out a while back. Uh, Wolverine became Apocalypse's horseman, Death. So, I, I, I the only thing that I can associate with Heaven's was Heaven's die. Uh, is, of course, I mean if you're if you're thinking of the the horsemen of the apocalypse, uh, you would you would definitely associate death as one of those. So, hey, there you go. Another one entombed Wolverine. You're, you're just helping us map out the history of Wolverine here. Too bad you guys tried your best to separate this album from the Marvel character themselves because you didn't do a good job. <laughs> Full heel starter. I love it. All right, this is our last, this is our last track. We're going to talk about it. Jesse's going to put up a pretty picture, and then we're going to do plugs. Short show tonight, to everybody, because we started late. This is track 10. We are not going to do the cover that was on the original album. Just This is the last track of the night. Out of hand. <laughs> <laughs> 
Original material on the original release of Entombed Wolverine Blues. Good song to end on. Uh, I really like it a lot. <clears throat> Overall, uh, if we were reviewing this as a new album, uh, I would give this a solid A minus. Um, I really think they they handled the material well. Uh, it's an interesting album. It would, uh, it would get if I was listening to it, you know, back in 1993. This would get heavy rotation in the CD player. Uh, Wolverine Blues and a couple of other tracks would definitely make the mixes. Uh, just overall a good, solid album. And by the way, nice pick, Jesse. Oh, I know what that <laughs> is. <laughs> yeah, Go ahead, uh, bud. Uh, yeah, well, just, just tying this to some Wolverine history here. Wolverine has fought the hand at one point. Uh, if anybody out there is familiar with Daredevil... <laughs> Um, f- familiar with Daredevil and uh, his his uh, cadre of villainy there. One of them is a group of ninjas called The Hand. And sure enough, Wolverine has mixed it up quite a few times. And what happens when you send a bunch of ninjas called The Hand to take out Wolverine? Well, by golly, you're going to be out of hand by the end of that battle. There you go. Entombed oh, once God. again. Yeah, I drove it Good home. God. Drove that it is- home. That is a me level fun. Put it in the car. I'm going to drive it home. Um, Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you learned something tonight. (laughs) I hope you all learned something tonight. Hey, as for Entombed Wolverine Blues, I'm giving it a definite thumbs up. I was really surprised at how much I enjoyed this album. A lot of good sound coming from here. I mean, I told Mark and Coop on the Messenger, wow, I'm really impressed with with how this sounds. Uh, and it, it hasn't wore off on me in any way. I think uh, Full of Hell is one of my favorite tracks off of this album for sure. And uh, there, there's a couple other ones that stand out. So I'm giving this one a definite thumbs up. I'll probably put, I'll definitely put Full of Hell on some kind of a mix here uh, for myself. So I'm glad I had the opportunity to review it with you uh, gents. And I'm glad all our listeners got to learn Claws Deep in Wolverine Week. That's right, baby. Claws Entombed deep. coming at you. Claws deep. Are you deep. kidding me? God damn it. <laughs> Robert Cooper, I'm so glad you made it on here, man. You've been out uh, fun, sir. <laughs> it's only because I'm, I'm not really under the weather, just on the toilet. So, which, luckily, I wasn't on the toilet this whole podcast. That was great. That would be awkward. I wonder if anybody ever took I've a done a few. I have. I've definitely. Dude, like. I have definitely been on the toilet in a few podcasts. Seventy percent of our of last week's podcast was was us talking about trying to make it to the toilet. Yeah, well, that was, I have peed that on a, my day. I've pooped <laughs> during during podcasts. <laughs> Dude, during the old man Logan, I just fucking took off because I thought I was gonna vomit. <laughs> oh, that was bad. Whew. All right, Coop. All right, what Coop. do you what do you think of this album, Coop? I was just like totally thinking as a side note, if only Robert Winfrey were going to do Everybody Loves a Bad Guy about Wolverine villains. Why not? <laughs> Why not, Robert yeah. Winfrey? 
He's, he's, too, he's not into it right now. He's, it was it, it's, We got him to do the Logan review. He's barely hanging on with MMA. I don't want to push it. All right. I was about to say, he, I think he's getting t- tired of reviewing, like, backwoods championship fighting or something like that. Backwoods <laughs> championship <laughs> fighting. Otherwise known as the I UFC. Mean, oh, I was just going to say no. Just the fact he reviews fucking everything. So I wouldn't be surprised if he reviewed some fucking <laughs> Something called that. <laughs> <laughs> Some backwards promotion in the swamps of Louisiana. <laughs> All right, Scoop, Entombed, hit it. Uh, all right, uh, Entombed. This album definitely holds up. I've, it, it is as good as I remember. Um, not quite as good as Left Hand Path or Clandestine for me. Like those two are like top shelf. This one's right under it. I give this about a nine out of ten. Really love it. Uh, it again, holds. It holds up. It's got a sound that is a. Uh, uh, very unique for this band, especially for the time. You didn't find a whole lot of bands doing this, and the whole death and roll thing, which is Mark's new favorite thing, besides floppy esophagus. Um, <laughs> Shit. It's really, uh, it's really neat, really good stuff. I'm very happy we actually went into the Wayback Machine and reviewed us of Entombed. And this is good right, and than like what we do now, which is like uh, just kind of okay Entombed. <laughs> All right. It's so entombed that, that AD. Wrap- it's entombed okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, next week on the Metal Hammer of Doom, we go back to reviewing uh, new stuff. We're going to be reviewing Darkest Hour, uh, Godless Prophets, which I believe is actually, uh, for those that are able to hear an advanced copy, it's gotten some pretty good reviews. Fuck, stop running away from me, calendar. I'm back here. God damn it. Get over All right. Here. Um, <laughs> Darkest Hour, Godless Prophets, and the Migrant Flora. Uh, we'll be reviewing that next week. Um, if you please go back and check out the rest of Wolverine Week. Um, again, we had our announcement on Friday and our subsequent uh, Wolverine discussion. And then on Monday was Jesse's source material. With, uh, we discussed Old Man Logan. And damn you, Hollywood is back. We reviewed Logan. Next week, we're reviewing Kong Skull Island. The following week, you'll get a double shot of me and Winfrey on two different shows. We'll be, um, I'm all over fucking shit next week, man. We got, uh, we'll be doing Iron Fist, a living weapon um, on source material. And damn you, Hollywood's Booty and the Beast. And then um, we're right here on the Metal Hammer of Doom with the latest obituary, uh, self-titled album, Obituary. And then finally, we close up the week with a TV party tonight, Netflix's Marvel's Iron Fist. Currently getting so-so reviews or not very good reviews. Um, and then real quick, uh, our last Damn You Hollywood for the month of March is Power Rangers. That's March 28th. And then we'll be uh, – they had the wrong date on this. Now it will hopefully come out when it's supposed to. We'll be, we'll be reviewing Steel Panther, Lower the Bar, and – I, I hope, hopefully we can get this done. Right now, we've penciled in a TV party tonight for the Legion season finale. Uh, the season finale is supposed to debut the night before, uh, on the 29th of March. We're going to talk about it the next day, uh, March 30th, if we can get it together. So that, that's the current plan. Um, I mean, we'll talk about the, the season in general, but we're, we're the, the specifically – just going to deal with the finale. Um, so hopefully that all works out. Those are my plugs for right now. Uh, tomorrow, oh, lastly, tomorrow night, wrapping up Wolverine Week, sort of, because there's actually one more show after this, but um, the ones that I'm involved with. On trial, X-Men Origins Wolverine. I actually sat and rewatched uh, it today. I have to prosecute this thing, and like, I don't know what I'm going to say. I, I'm honestly like struggling to come up with a cohesive, coherent argument against the movie other than, wah, Deadpool's mouth got so shut and isn't Deadpool. <laughs> um, so, Crap. But, uh, check out the, shut up. Check out the uh, Rattle and Broadcasting Network on Friday, the 10th. There'll be a new Screaming Boy up and uh, they'll, they'll be talking about Logan and Wolverine and deaths in comic books. So give that a look. We'll give that a look, see. Jesse, go ahead and do your thing. All right, all right. Again, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for uh, listening to me 
berate your ears with some Wolverine knowledge tonight. I know this is a metal podcast. It kind of feels like it's a little out of place, but hey, and Earache thought it was a great idea to cross promote with a comic book company. Hot damn. I did the same thing tonight. So, uh, Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Jesse Starcher. I do a show on the Rattlish Broadcasting Network called Source Material. We cover a lot of different story arcs in the comic book medium. So if you are interested in maybe learning about some stories that you've never read before, we'll spoil the shit out of them for you. Just go back into the archives, take a, find, find you something you're interested in. Like we mentioned earlier, Lord, Wolverine, Lord of the Vampires, you owe it yourself to go check that out. It's, so, it's such a cool concept. Uh, Coming up here in a couple weeks, I believe I'll be airing a fun night I had at the local comic book store here where me, uh, a couple other podcasts, the Kapow podcast, and also the Dueling Ogres podcast got together, sat down, had a round table. A comic book store was open, and we did a podcast, and we had lots of fun. And we didn't have any format, so it's it's all over the place, but it's about an hour and a half to two hours of some podcast goodness that'll probably be airing here in a couple weeks on the source material slot. Give that a listen. And uh, other than that, just make sure to give the Radlich and broadcasting Facebook page a like to stay up on top of all the great podcasts that we have to offer. Um, and we're on iTunes, we're on Stitcher, we're on TuneIn radio and right here on blog talk radio.com. Thanks for keeping me connected tonight. Blog talk Cooper. The floor is all yours. Yeah. Thanks for keeping me connected. AT&T. <laughs> Bunch of fuck ups. <laughs> Anywho, uh, so in terms of plugs, uh, make sure to drink lots of Powerade. That's very important to stay hydrated. Uh, <laughs> the only thing that's kept me going today, that and books. You gotta have, you gotta read something while you're fucking trapped on the trapped in the toilet. Uh, <laughs> Anywho, there's that. <laughs> so Whoa. there's that. Uh, there's the Sensei Rider podcast, which I still haven't talked to my co-host in like three months, but uh, it's still there. People keep liking the page, and I don't know why. So, uh, hey, find us on Facebook. <laughs> Facebook.com slash Sensei Rider podcast. That is S-E-N-T-A-I-R-D-E-R podcast. Uh, I think there's that. There's this podcast. I'm on that. I still totally am going to try and jump onto that Power Ranger podcast if, I'm, if I get off in time, because that would be cool, even though that movie's probably not going to be very good. Uh, yeah, no, no faith in that movie. Uh, I've seen Hollywood fuck up way too many. Like this is your childhood, kids. Like movies. <laughs> um, like if there are metal balls in this, I am going to throw something at the screen. <laughs> okay. You know, like in Transformers, where when the robots had big giant testicles. Oh, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, very classy, like, Michael Bay. Very classy. It's like, yes, we needed that. I needed that in my <laughs> life. I needed to see large robotic testicles, which are really just two rag uh-uh. and balls. Nah. Anyhow, I, I, uh, think you're I think you're going to be okay. If, I, if I'm not okay, you'll know. Okay. I'll probably just bitch in our chat. I'll be like, God damn it, I'm moving. Fuck bullshit. Rah, rah, rah. Anywho, uh, yeah, uh, final plug, WTMnet.com, my buddy Sean Garmer, his website, where uh, people review shit, and he has a wrestling podcast. It's pretty good. I like it. Uh, still haven't re- released my review that I wrote like a month ago, so I haven't started writing the other review, because I'm like, well, hey, uh, <laughs> at least release the other one before I write you the other one, you know? <laughs> so bad. I'm so bad with Incidentally, people. they are now hosting our podcast. They're all of our material is migrated now to uh, to there. So if you're not signed up through iTunes to the Rattling and Broadcasting Network, uh, but you are signed up to the WTMax.net or whatever the fuck it's called, uh, then you'll get in our stuff now. <laughs> so that's cool. There, there you go. Yeah, I feel bad for Sean because, like, the poor dude's trying to edit, like, everything on that site. Oh, man. And then he has me sending him 1,600-word reviews. Yeah, oh, he needs darn, he needs dude. like an assistant like I've got. I've got this guy Jesse who does like all my work for me. It's fantastic. Oh, man. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, you pretty much <laughs> upload the music, and you're like, "Who can you upload the music?" Oh yeah, let me get it in at fucking nine fifty nine. No. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't really work for me. 
I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. I give him shit. I give him shit, but if I but if it wasn't for Jesse, I don't know, man. I might have shut this shit down already. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm here to help. I, that's, I, that's all I, I can say. I think we should you should re- rename the podcasting network the Rattlewood Star Trek Power Hour. <laughs> well, that's not going to happen. I have way too big an ego for that. Um, I <laughs> but if I ever make any I'm... money off of this, I will send him a check. <laughs> Woo! Look at me go. Are you going to do? Are you going to do like they did Chris Jericho once, and he made just enough money in royalties to pay for the stamp? They just <laughs> sent him a check for zero. They, they sent him a check for zero dollars. Oh, that's awesome! Wow. Yeah. It's sad how many right, times man. I read that his first book like six <laughs> times. All right. Anything else? Uh, pet your cat. There you go. That's all. That's a good. Oh, one. That's a good way to end it. Oh, oh, and go eat Chipotle. Yeah. I had a really good date at Chipotle yesterday. There you go. Oh my! You you wait till the end of the podcast to tell us about you know Lonely Hearts Cooper date. We'll have to wait to the next podcast. All right, folks. No, that's a clip on Dragon Ball Z. Yeah, come back <laughs> next week and you can hear all about all about sloppy esophaguses, fucking Chipotle date. Uh, <laughs> yeah, like next week's gonna be great. I'm gonna give that. And then Friday, I'm going to go see Obituary in concert. Like, that next Friday. Awesome. Yeah, like, it's Midnight Creator and Obituary. Oh, oh Creator? Oh, creator is. Oh, dude. I'm jealous. All right. That's yeah, impressive. I'm, I'm, cutting, I'm cutting it short, guys. I don't, I don't feel well either, so we're, we're, uh, I'm killing it. Thank you, everyone, what? for uh, tuning in. If you're uh, one of the good folks that has migrated over from the heavy metal group, where I've been posting this and other things like the latest dope cover of Ministry Thieves. Uh, we appreciate you listening. For anybody out there that's also new to the show, I appreciate you tuning in, checking us out. Wolverine Week, everybody, here on the Rattle Engine Broadcasting Network. Keep listening. Be well, be safe, and be safe.